Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with a physical overview of our Etherscope NXG. So the objectives here in this particular module are to understand the various connections that we have available on the Etherscope NXG and review the wireless capabilities of the Etherscope NXG. So to start with, we have two management interfaces. And this is something that's unique with this tool. And that is that we have a couple of different management interfaces that we can use to connect up to the network. So we have a wired, and this allows us to connect at 10, 100, 1000, and this is gonna be our cable test port. So as part of this presentation, I'm gonna go through how we can go in and use this to do some cable testing. We're gonna talk about the difference between open TDR tests and terminated tests, uh, when we would wanna use a terminator with that, and what those tests show us, and even how we can upload those cable test results to Link Live to document any issues we might have in our cabling plant. On the wireless side, we have a one by one dual band 802.11 AC Wave 2 radio. So what we're gonna see is that this management wireless radio allows us to connect the Etherscope NXG to our wireless network and be able to access it. In fact, what we're gonna do is if I come in here and hit this, over there on the other side of the screen, there is our Etherscope. And one of the things that I really like about the Etherscope is the fact that we can access it using VNC. So this means that if I connect that management wireless radio or the management port up to the network and I get that IP address, I can go in and remote into this. So you could take and send this out to a remote location. They can plug it in. All they have to do is swipe down from the top and they can come in and they can see, like in this case, here's my uh, management port connections over here. And I can see that I've got one at 10.0.11.156. And then all I have to do is type in that IP address. I can VNC in. So we're going to be using this to do the live demo. But this also means that you can go in. Oh, let's go back. We didn't mean to do that. you can go in and remote into it. So it's as good as being out there at that remote site. So what we find is that the Android system, this is an Android based tool, that Android system uses these management interfaces to communicate with the network. So if I'm uploading things to Link Live, if I'm downloading apps, if I'm using the web browser, we're gonna go through those management interfaces. But it's as easy, as easy as connecting your cell phone to the network to connect up this device to your wireless network, or you can just plug in the wired interface. We're gonna see that both of these interfaces can be used for running discovery and some of the other tests. This can't be used for packet capture and it can't be used for the performance test. We're gonna be doing the performance test through the wired or Wi-Fi test ports. Our wired port. So if we come up here and take a look at the top of the unit, in fact, I'll uh, let's switch over here. Uh, up here on the top, we've got uh, our two ports up there, and we've got our wired port. And our wired port is two ports up there that are treated as one. So it's important to note that with those ports, that uh, you can only have one of those active at a time. Now, the copper port supports 10, 100, 1000, 2.5 gig, 5 gig and 10 gig. So if you have a multi-gig interface, we're seeing this used quite a bit, where people want to be able to run more than one gig across their Cat5 their Cat e infrastructure, but they can't run 10 gig because of the cabling, they could go in and possibly run 2.5 or 5 gig. This will connect up to those connections. We also have a 1 gig slash 10 gig SFP slot. And oftentimes I get questions about those SFP slots. Uh, do we need to use a specific SFP with that? And the answer to that is no, you don't. Uh, we find that a variety of different SFPs work in there. In fact, I just ordered some single mode SFPs for a project I'm working on. Uh, in fact, we'll go back here to the Ethernet drawer. Uh, I've got a DAC cable. And if we switch over here, this is our direct access cable. 
Uh, we can go in, and this is just a, a coax cable that's got a couple of adapters for 10 gig. If I don't want to use optics, I can plug in this DAC cable, and this provides a pretty rugged way to plug in and out of my 10 gig connections for when I'm doing testing. So whether you're using the DAC cable or you're using one of your SFBs, in fact, as we go through here, what I would highly recommend is if you're going in to validate a network connection, be sure to use your SFP so that way you know that your SFP is working properly and you know that that connection is working properly as well. Now, when we do connect up the fiber connection, we're going to see that the light lights up over on the wired port and that's where the link light is for that. That wired port also supports PoE. Now, we say 90 watts at the switch. What this turns into is about 71 watts out at the powered device. But we're going to see that not only can we measure the voltage, but we can turn on true power and we can validate that we're getting the current and the wattage that we expect out of that connection. So pretty nifty stuff as far as being able to go in and use these ports to measure what's going on. Another thing that's pretty slick is we can use the wired copper port. That fiber port's not going to work for this part. But that wired copper port can be used for charging this unit. Now, if we're using a switch that is providing less than class four, that's less than 25 watts of power, that will extend the battery, but it won't charge it. So some of the power will be used from the switch, some will be used for the battery. If we're using a class four PoE device or better, it will charge the battery on this. So if you're gonna have this thing sitting there, and here's the thing, because you can remote into it, you can plug this in and leave it plugged in. In fact, I'm gonna tell you right now, the worst place you can put this, people always ask where the best place is, I'll tell you right now, the worst place is leaving this sit in your desk drawer. You're gonna see that with the discovery capabilities of the EtherScope NXG, the best thing to do is to plug this into a VLAN trunk on your network, on the network port, plug the management port into a switch port, and then you can VNC into that any time to be able to go out and see what's going on. So when you get that, when that equipment finally comes in, be sure to go out and get that thing hooked up and leave it hooked up and use it on a regular basis. But if you have that plugged into a class four or better PoE connection, it will charge while you have it plugged in. You don't even have to have that USB-C charger plugged in. The Wi-Fi port. So this has uh, a four by four, four dual band 802.11 AC wave two wireless radio in there. It gives us visibility into Wi-Fi six devices. Now we can use this with iPerf for doing throughput testing. So iPerf is going to be one of those things that we're gonna do today as far as measuring throughput. We're gonna look at how we can use iPerf with the NetAlly test accessory as well as using it with just a straight up iPerf server and how we can use those two in combination to go in and do our throughput testing, okay? Uh, we can do discovery and monitoring of SSIDs, BSSIDs, client devices and interferers. In fact, one of the things I'm gonna show you that we can do is what we call breaking the layer two ceiling. And that is, you're gonna see that we can scan the wireless network and we can connect to the wired, ne wired network, and we can combine the information from those two to give us a view of what's going on with the wireless network without having to connect to it. That's really nice when we have more than one wireless network. So we'll go through, show you how that works. Uh, our wired management port over here on the side, uh, 10 100, 1000, we can use it for discovery, we can use it for VNC, I can remote into it, use it for iPerf, Android applications, and that's support we're gonna be using when we do our cable tests. We've got a micro SD card slot on here. So if we flip over here, I just bring this up right there. There's our little micro SD slot right there. Uh, pretty handy. In fact, what we find is that we can load videos on there. Uh, we can load things like PDF files. So I've gone in and created network documentation, put it on here, and then I can just open it up. So now I have one tool that has all these things on there. So videos, uh, we can do packet captures. Now I'm gonna show you, uh, not in this particular presentation, but if we do a packet capture, we can upload that packet capture to Link Live. Or you can save it to the SD drive. So that way you can just save it there, pop it out, put it in your computer, open up Wireshark, and take a look at what's going on. 
here's the really cool thing, and I've tested this out. This will capture at full line rate 10 gig. Captures up to one gigabyte, but will capture at full line rate one gig. And if we're using a filter, we can use this as a way to capture those packets then go in and start analyzing them. So that micro SD card turns out to be a great way to move that around. Uh, our vent slash lock slot. So down on the bottom, we've got our vent, but what we see is that the holes on each side right there fit a Kensington lock. So that way, if you want to lock this down, you got it in the wiring closet, you don't want someone to walk away from it, and you have two of them. So that way, if your buddy in your department keeps taking this, when you need to use it, you can both put locks on there. So you both have to agree that someone's going to take it. But what this does is this gives us a way that we can lock this in place. We don't have to worry about someone walking off with it. The USB-C port, we use this for charging the unit right now. So uh, we can plug that in, plug it into the charger that comes with the uh, unit, and we can charge that up. USB-A port. So up on the top of the Etherscope NXG, we've got a USB type A port right up there, and it's a USB 3 port. Now, here's the funny thing, and that is, uh, you know, we find that with, uh, with this, we usually don't have a, like a USA, USB A port on an Android device, but when we do, there's some pretty cool things we can do with it. One of those things that I did recently is I took a Fluke Networks FI1000 fiber inspection scope. I loaded up one of the camera apps that's in the App Store, and I was able to view the end face of the fiber. So in that, in that example, I could buy that fiber inspection scope, combine it with my Etherscope NXG, and now as I'm going in and setting up my networks, I can inspect my fiber, I can see all that right there on that scope, and I can use that as a way to make sure that that fiber's clean. I can, I've plugged barcode scanners in there. If it is something that is recognized by the Android operating system, we can plug it in. Yet one more option. If you wanted to connect an external display to your Etherscope NXG, you can get a USB to HDMI adapter. And those support DisplayLink, which is in the NetAlly app store. So now you could extend this display out to an HDMI monitor. So if you want to use a bigger monitor, you're showing people what you've discovered, things like that, you could use VNC or you could use that. Just different ways that we can use that as far as connecting things up. Uh, Bluetooth 5.0, uh, we can use that. I've got a uh, little keyboard, little Microsoft Wedge keyboard that I use with this all the time. This keyboard works really well. Uh, I've got a barcode scanner. So a lot of times when I'm going in and testing wall jacks, I'll create a spreadsheet that has barcodes on it. And when I go to enter in my comment, I just boop, scan it and it talks to it via Bluetooth. Uh, printer, I, I can show you later. We've got a little Epson printer that connects to it. Headset, you name it. And this is the really neat thing, is that NetAlly has given us a platform that we can work off of. So they didn't give us something that was fixed that we could only use it in a certain way. They provided interfaces on this so that we can integrate this into our processes within our organization and make it a very powerful tool. And it can be that tool that you carry with you, you know, wherever you go. It also support, supports Bluetooth low energy as well. Uh, we've got a flashlight on there. So if we swipe down, we can click on the flashlight right there. We can turn that on. So this can be used with the camera. It can also be used to illuminate a dark spot, dark area. So if you're looking behind a desk or something, trying to see where something's connected up, we can go in and use that flashlight to see that. It's got a camera. So oftentimes when we go out to troubleshoot a problem, we need to document what's going on. Or it could be that we have something like a wireless access point in a location that's hard to get to. So we could use the camera and I'll show you with Link Live how we can take a picture that we take with this tool and we can upload that to Link Live and we can attach it to a test result. So if I go out and do a test and say, hey, this AP is ready to go, I could then take a picture of where that AP is located and upload that if we had something that was damaged. And this is the other part is that we see that this tool is used for both network validation and troubleshooting. So if I'm in validation mode, I can use the camera as a way to document my network. 
If I'm in troubleshooting mode, I could go in and tie a trouble ticket number to a test result and then put a picture in there. So now that we ha now we have all of that information tied together. So number of different ways that we can use that, but it's got a camera in there. So you can use that camera to take pictures or record video. Thank you.